hello. So today, um, I guess by popular demand, I'll be doing another IPS tutorial thingy. Um, today we'll be reviewing the IPS tutorial program because Luminator does not provide it with their package or whatever. Anyway, um, this tutorial file is supposed to come with version 3.7, but it's applicable with some others. Um, I know it was manufactured in 2001, so it should be good with any version from 3.1 onward. So, first thing we're going to do is run it. Um, the exe file is a little iffy, but it works. Um, it may prompt you to uh, not run the program because it thinks it's a virus or something. Um, it's not. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. You can read. Um, if not, it says your current screen is too small. Or whatever. The demo will run properly at this resolution. If the text appears too small. Uh, you can resize it. But anyway, um, enough of that. It's actually, it has like this cool like opener thing. Um, and I find it fascinating. Despite the fact... Because it was made in the early 2000s. So we'll put in a name. It doesn't really matter what you put here, but anything works. It's just using it as a reference. Um, so I'll just enter that and then click the start demo. And then we'll proceed to the tu tutorial main menu. Um, so yeah, you get this prompt. Welcome to IPS, the latest advancement in destination sign programming. Keep in mind that this is made in 2001, so like like a whole other world ago. Um, this tutorial has been designed to help you learn the basic, emphasis on basic, uh, techniques required to get you up and running in minimal time. This tutorial is very bare bones, as you'll see um, in the following minutes. Um, there's some other things that I'll probably show in other videos that this tutorial won't really teach you how to do. After you complete this two tutorial and begin gaining experience with the software, you may find it helpful to refer back to various topics as a refresher or an extension to the online help files. Those do not exist. Um, I have spent a couple years like researching this stuff. Um, if there are online help files, then you'll have to pay handsomely for them because they just don't exist. So we'll start with getting started um, to keep things simple. This uh, is just a breakdown of text conventions and how things will be formatted. Um, let's just do this. Once again, you can read. Um, if not, I don't know what to, what to say here, but yeah, um, this is what all this stuff means. Text like this with the blue background and border is instruction indicating steps for you to try. White background and yellow background. Next step. What is IPS? Um, IPS is an acronym for Integrated Programming System. It's It was produced by Luminator in the early 1990s and was released with the, um, I believe it was the Mega Max 2000? But the idea is that you use this software on their products, and it was only made for the North American market. And, um, yeah, you use it through this complicated process that they've made to reprogram Luminaire to head signs. Uh, IPS makes sign programming simple with an asterisk. Um, this tutorial in the online help system, which does not exist, are designed to explain its use and to train users on details on how to use the software. Um, yes, 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 yes. You need to be uh, barely proficient in computer use. Um, so yeah, it was the Max 3000 system. Uh, almost there. Message Writer is the precursor to what this software is. Um, Message Writer is an MS-DOS based software, so um, that looks even more, more primitive than this. Um, anyway, um, IPS allows easier programming in relation to Message Writer and modification of display displays on their signs. Um, 
with some features. The features that they'll have here won't be, I don't believe it'll be the full scope, because um, I believe around this time was when they first introduced the Horizon system, or like the LED display as you see on most North American buses. But there will be some features that they'll talk about. Um, yes, you can import files from message writer and then like compile them in IPS, blah, 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 blah. PC MICA cards. This is an important thing. Um, this would be at least one of the tools that you'll use to put your completed message file onto an ODK two, three, or four. Um, there's some more information that I have to share about the two, but that'll come later. The Max 2000 ODK, um, for those who don't know, the Max 2000 has... Okay, so you have like the ODK. Um, damn, I wish I could edit pictures into this. But yeah, uh, you, so you have the Max 2000 ODK. It has a green vacuum fluorescent display and then a keypad but not the key, um, not the card slot. The Max 3000 ODK has the card slot, so that'll be the, the main difference. Um, the Max 2000 also has an MCU port, usually to the right um, of the ODK. And um, when programming, you'll take an, an MCU, which is like a yellow briefcase looking thing, plug it into the um, MTU connector, and then do sign updates that way. Another difference is that the Max 3000 ODK holds its sign memory in the, the physical ODK itself, and the, uh, the Max 2000 ODK holds sign memory in the, um, the front head sign. IPS is compatible with Windows 95, 98, NT, and 2000. It's also compatible with um, pretty much every operating system following. Like, I have a friend who now uses it on a Mac. Um, so yeah, um, anything pretty much made after Windows 95. I don't know about Linux, but yeah, it's possible. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Anyway. This is a, a flowchart that they use. Um, you'll see this pretty frequently. If you have, like, the Illuminator booklets for, like, their tech and stuff, you'll see a lot of these here too, but this is just like a very rudimentary breakdown of what the process will be. Um, so like you'll select your project. This will make more sense later in the video and also as you learn more, and then you'll create a sign set, which is like the array of displays that you use in your fleet or bus. Um, a zone is like an area where you put text on a sign. A template is like a a procedure for how text will be placed on a sign. A message class will... It's like an archive that contains all of your... Um, that contains different fields in which you place text. Messages are like the individual readings that you see on, dis on signs. Check spelling because um, no one's perfect. And then once you do all that, you compile and download a project onto a card or an MCU. So that's getting started. Exercises. Um, I don't want to do all the exercises just in the um, in the observance of time, but we'll do a couple. So let's see. Just look through here. Da, 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 da. Okay. So we'll do exercise one: adding a new message. In this scenario, it is assumed that your projects from previous signed programming systems have already been imported into IPS, a crude assumption, and are now available to compile, download, and use. So you, the assignment is to add a new message to an imported object, a project. You log in, open project, select sign set, create message, assign existing template, and compile. All right. Um... I've been using this for a while, so I might fly through this. Um, if you need to, you can pause the video and like comment something down below. Um, I usually monitor comments, so like I'm not just like ignore. But um, 
this is operating on the assumption that you have like created projects. Um, I'll show you how to like create stuff like that in another video. But let's go ahead and open Anytown IPS. So you just opened a uh, project. Uh, let's do that. All that stuff. So there is three message classes that you want to be aware of. Um, IP. If you have IPS, you may be given five, but there's three important ones. So the A class contains the error messages, um, and those are what you see here. Class B contains public relations messages, so like happy holidays or happy new year or... In, in today's times where a mask went on public transit, stuff like that. Class C is where you keep all your regular messages, like out of service, not in service, bus to downtown, shuttle, uh, stuff like that. So, and then D will be for the, um, the ODK. It's to prevent operators from putting in what are called forbidden messages in quotation marks, but that won't be necessary here. So let's go to class C. And so it's directing us to set, open up a sign set. This is just one that's put in, in the tutorial. Um, once again, I'll show you how to do a sign set and stuff in a, another video. So let's bring this up to the front. Um, IPS is a very touch sensitive program in good and bad senses. So we're just going to run through the rest of the exercise. Um, because if I provide commentary, we'll be here all day. So let's enter 34. Oh my god. All right. Mm, yeah, that's how you do stuff. So apply will um apply any changes that you've made to the um the reading in the message listing box. In this case, it got rid of the root number. And now we're changing the template. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, these templates are a pivotal part of IPS, and they are very helpful. They would expedite uh, this process by a lot. This is operating on the assumption that you have an MTU, um, but this is also like... If you have an MTU plugged in, then you're probably using a dinosaur machine, which I doubt any of you are using. Um, like the laptop that I'm running, that I'm recording this on, does not have an MTU port. But let's just pretend that we do have an MTU. Uh, so that was how to add a message. Um, let's see. What else? 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 Let's do exercise three. So now I'm going to reduce commentary by a lot so we can run through this exercise quickly. Oh, so now we're editing message classes, and in this, you get to add and delete the different fields in which text will be entered. All right, um, so I guess in this case, we're adding graphic. It's prompting us to add a graphic, um, excuse me, graphic. 
you don't have to add a description. Um, usually I just put in a name and then because I'm the one who's going to be creating and then managing this file. I don't need to add a description, but yeah, the um, with the message classes, you can add pretty much whatever you want, as many classes as you want. And yeah, just do whatever you feel would suit you best. So now we open the message listing thing again, and now we have the um, the graphic message field, or message class, rather. Uh, so now we're changing the template. When you look at the signs, you see gray boxes with, drawn within each sign. These are the gray boxes are where the text will appear. Um, in reference to the templates that you create for your uh, listing, whatever. So this is the ODK. This is where the root number will appear. The destination. If you have like a a stack destination, it'll align left. You'll see eventually what I mean by that. On the side, seven by ninety display. You see root number here and then destination here. Rear sign, you just get a root and yeah. So this zone is where text will be placed. Um, ult how it appears depends ultimately on how you decide to format it. You can adjust the, okay, it's not doing it here, but you can adjust where text will appear by like grabbing these little tabs and then like pulling them left and right. Um, I advise caution though, because like I said, IPS is very touch sensitive, and if you're not careful, it'll just end up doing something you just don't want it to do, and you'll take a, a step forward and two steps back. The pixels are easy to see on this sign, but can we... So you can also adjust the size of each, like, preview window. Um, I like to adjust it so I can see each sign um, individually and not like hit, slightly hidden like its front sign is. Um, there's a better way to identify pixel locations rather than trying to count them. So another thing, um, you can't see it here, but when you fly your cursor over um, an individual sign, this number here, um, this is like a reader for the, the sign array. So, It'll change as you move across the sign. So this will be like dot one, or this will say one zero. Um, yeah, actually, not explain it. Let me just shut up. <laughs> yeah, so literally what I just explained, but just with visuals. So yeah, um, these are different points on the front sign array or a matrix, whatever you want to call it. This is how you'll um, format text, or in the case of this example, graphic zones. For graphics, um, you have to implement a graphic by default so that when you go to apply the template, the graphic will appear um, along with your template. So, Come on. <laughs> uh. <sighs> so petty.
So you have class elements. These are the different message class fields that uh, you create when like setting up stuff. Um, this will show all the fonts you have available in your project to use. This will show all the different sizes and then um, different character widths. Um, you can get kind of like complex with this. You have you can have up to four types for each font type. Uh, so let's go to font 10, justify left. This aligns text in a particular way. So horizontally, you can align it to the left of the sign, center or the right side. Vertically, align it to the top, center or bottom of the sign. So let's do left and then top. A Clark template is selected, so let's press OK. Blah, 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 that. Emphasis on this. This process needs to be repeated for each zone on each sign in the sign set anytime you want to create a new template. Careful planning and use of templates can help to minimize the number of different templates you'll need to create. Just efficient, man. Just be efficient. You must draw the zones and identify font, font style, and stroke for each. You can then go back to the edit message listing window and select the message. Select and apply the template for root graph, root desk graph, then view the signs. So got that, got that, and that. And that'll be the end of the exercise. And then I guess I'll do one more exercise, number six. Um, but if there's any others that you'd like to see, um, comment below or something, and then I'll, like, I'll give explanation or make a video, you know, something. All right. So in this one, we'll be renumbering message codes. This is a pretty easy um, task, and it helps to organize stuff. You'll definitely have to use it at some point. Um, so we're going to the PR class. So this is what the renumber window will look like. Um, pay attention when doing this. Uh, you, you can do some really dumb mistakes by just not paying attention. So you enter the beginning and ending message codes for the range of messages you want renumbered. And these two. And then you enter the first number you want to use in the renumbering series. And then you enter the increments between each renumbered message code in this box here. So let's start with one, three, ten, ten. Now let's do renumbering. A helpful tip about this message creation thing, um, it will, IPS will sort the messages in ascending or descending order. Um, normally it's in descending order, but, um, so if we put 21 here, then this will auto sort to go above code 30 and under code 20. Yeah. Um, When renumbering message codes, you cannot assign a number that is already assigned. Um, as an example, let's say you have 50 messages. You cannot specify numbers 1 through 20 because numbers 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 are already assigned to existing messages. Da -da 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 message code numbers can be up to five digits in length. Um, in IPS, yes, but on the ODK, it's a bit different uh, because of memory constraints. I believe you can only go up to 10,000 codes on some models of the ODK, and I think the regular ODK 3, you can do up to 300. And that'll be, um, that'll be all for this video. Um, like I said, if you want to see something else, that wasn't covered in this video. I can do another one, but 
otherwise, no. That'll be all. Here's their contact info. Um, you know, if you decide to try and contact them for info, but yeah, uh, that's all. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>